Hey y'all, it is Jocelyn Elise, That Mindset Teacher, and today I am going to be walking you through how I have made this standards-based anchor chart. Um, so the specific anchor chart that we're going to be looking at is digital. I love having digital anchor charts because I can then like go back to them from year to year. I don't get a lot of experience with wear and tear. And then there's also a really cool way for you to be able to print them out and laminate them to be an actual poster size anchor chart that you can print out and have on your wall and it can still be interactive with your students. I also use my anchor charts um, as kind of like a guide for my interactive notebook. And if you're interested in learning how this system works and how I put these things together, um, you can definitely check out my previous video and go ahead and watch that so that you can get a walkthrough of my digital anchor charts, what they look like, and how I utilize them inside of the classroom. Um, but today we are going into creator mode and we are going to be looking at a um, anchor chart that is focused on point of view. Let's get into it. All right y'all so before we go into creator mode I did want to go ahead and um, take a second to give you guys an opportunity to see kind of what it is that we are talking about. So when I'm talking about my digital anchor charts, these are anchor charts that I have created inside of Google Slides. And I do literally just copy and paste these depending on the standard that I'm teaching that week. I will copy and paste this slide into my weekly slides. I do have a video all about how I teach with Google Slides. So if you would like to check that out, you can definitely go ahead and look at that video as as well um but let's just say like for this particular week i am teaching theme um which refers to rl.2 determining a theme of a story drama or poem from details within a text i have this slide that explicitly teaches that um standard to my students so it gives them a clear definition of theme what a theme is what a theme isn't common themes and things they can think about as they are trying to find the theme of a text I do go ahead and include a version that has some blanks in it as well um, because I do have interactive notebook pages that align with each of these anchor charts. So then that way, um, as students are looking at my um, screen or looking at like the smart board where I have that information up, they're also writing down the key or important aspects of that because we know, because writing, we know down writing down things, things helps us to solidify, to solidify them, into, them our into our memory. So we are now ready to go ahead and start creating this anchor chart based off of plot. Remember, plot is the events that happen in the story. To teach this, I often use the narrative or story arc. You guys will see on the side, I did have like some inspo, but it was very, very blurry, which is what um prompted me to go ahead and just create this myself sometimes if i find um really good things like that um that kind of show and instruct the students the way i want them to and really cover the parts of the standards that i needed to do i will literally screenshot that and just put it inside of my slides um but since this image was really blurry and i could not find a um, clear picture of it I went ahead and began creating it on my own so the first thing I'm doing is getting that shape by um, using the line tool inside of slides and y'all will see I also use um, because Google Slides does not let you like download fonts into it I go ahead and I just open like a blank PowerPoint with the fonts that I like to use and then I just copy and paste that into my Google Slides so that way I can have my fonts. These fonts that I use are actually the same fonts that I use for all my classroom decor. So it kind of matches my entire room. Um, if you're interested in these fonts, I did download them from the font. They are for personal use only. Um, but it is um, Dear Sunshine and Buttercup Sample. So literally, I just go into PowerPoint and I type in um, whatever it is I want to be on my slides in that font and then I copy and paste it as an image into Google Slides so that way I can have the pretty fonts that I want. Now 
This um, particular standard that we are teaching is to describe in depth a character setting or event inside of a story play or story poem or drama. So one thing that I like to do, um, because the previous standards reference um, and really kind of think about it, like when you're in the previous grades, y'all, that was, I, I'm trying to figure out how to say what I'm saying. But basically, students have learned this before they really go into the narrative art, because this is a higher kind of level of thinking. They think about plot as beginning, middle, end, right? That's usually what they typically do. So I um, like to situate my students by thinking about beginning, middle, end, um, and kind of putting that and so taking what they already know and relating it to what we're learning. So for example, you guys see I typed out the definition of an exposition. So um, exposition usually happens towards the beginning of the text, right? It's where they're introducing the characters, they're introducing the setting and the plot. So um, I went ahead and kind of put that by beginning so that they can see like, okay, this is towards the beginning of the text where I should be introducing my characters, my setting um and really getting into like whatever the problem is of the story and so then we're going into rising action and you guys might have just noticed that I kind of googled a definition to make sure that I have the definition that is um really kind of focused on what it is that we need to learn and what we are thinking about um I did go ahead y'all will see on the um inspo picture that I have they do point out problem I love that they did that because um sometimes I feel like when students are writing because we can use this um same narrative arc as we are instructing about writing um because then it helps students to know the parts that should be included inside of their story um but when they are writing um, they sometimes forget that their stories need to be a, there needs to be a problem. So it can't just be the day I, um, you know, a story is not the day I went to my birthday party and it's just like, oh, we ate ice cream, then we ate cake and then we went home and it was a fun day. That's not really a true narrative. Um, narrative has to have some tension. It has to have, or good narrative at least, has to have some tension, has to have problem and solution. So I went ahead and put those arrows there. Um, so that we can have that problem and solution and y'all see really I'm just kind of following the same steps now I'm going ahead um, y'all saw I typed out the different terms inside of um, my PowerPoint so then I'm just going ahead and copying those in with the definitions of those words so we already talked about the exposition which is the beginning of the story it situates the readers by introducing character setting and plot then we went into the rising action which is the events that build up the tension so that's that tension the problem and solution that we were talking about is kind of really getting into the problem and the suspense in the story leading to the climax the climax is the big event in the story and then our falling action is the events that lead to the problem being solved i really really love thinking about these specific terms especially because we don't use them a ton a ton in elementary and honestly it's not um, something that's a huge focus for reading but I remember when I was in middle school and even in high school talking about these things so it kind of gives them that language as they are thinking about the story and gives them a good example of um, just how they can situate their writing right so I love using the narrative arc to just and to think deeply about the text that we read um now I'm just going ahead and I went ahead and typed out problem and solution and I'm going ahead and um putting those um on my chart as well and I think I'm going to give a little definition of um those words as well even though they're kind of self-explanatory I just want to make sure that students clearly understand exactly what I mean throughout. I did go ahead in exposition instead of saying it introduces the plot because the plot is the whole thing. I said that it introduces the problem um, because the plot is like literally everything that happened in the story. Um, but really in the beginning, you shouldn't be introducing everything that happened in the story. You should be introducing um, kind of what is the situation, what's the problem that is going to occur that going to drive the rest of the tension for your story um I do want y'all to notice too that I do have um 
on the side i have my standards um because i am teaching fourth and fifth grade y'all we could chat about that a little bit later um but i am teaching fourth and fifth grade so i have the fourth and fifth grade standards there and i highlight the parts um that that particular anchor chart suggests if you look or not suggest but addresses um and if you look at the slides we're actually on slide 21 and there are more and more slides uh way more slides on this particular um document where i just literally talk and explain um or not talk but have like different anchor charts that explain um almost every fourth and fifth grade reading standard okay so now what you see me doing is going ahead and covering the different parts of the narrative arc with these kind of transparent boxes. So when I created the color, I actually turned the transparency down so that way you could still see the words over the box um, or over the the um, shape that was created right so i am kind of grouping them together by color so beginning middle end is grouped together problem and solution are grouped together and then my exposition rising action climax falling action and resolution which is more of like the technical terms are grouped together in one color so i kind of have those um situated and y'all see like for the ones on the side i literally just flipped flipped it um horizontal so that way i don't have to manip manipulate the shape too too much um and then i'm just covering those bad boys up um i really kind of didn't I, I didn't i know how i was feeling about these colors so i kind of adjusted them again um because i felt like you couldn't see the definitions in problem and solution um and i think i'm gonna just leave beginning middle and end as is now you see me going ahead and taking a screenshot of that and i am over in my interactive notebook pages so i just went ahead and duplicated the character one because it already has the standard on it um since character event and setting are all in the same standard and i'm literally going to duplicate this onto the slide i am zooming in to make sure that i can actually read the words and see the text pretty well and then i'm again going to duplicate that slide and you are going to see me actually going in and putting these white boxes over the terms and definitions. Now, we said earlier that we want students to be able to write those words in because when you write it, it helps it to solidify those things into your memory. So I want them to be thinking about and really having that in their head, these terms, um, you know exposition rising action falling action climax and resolution i want them to have that embedded into their memory so that they can really kind of think about what those words mean and have a deep understanding and then i did want them to write that plot is the events now i'm literally just going to copy all of that and bring it to the bottom since kids are going to glue this into their journal thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope that you saw some helpful tips and some things that can help you to really um build and strengthen your instruction inside of your classroom as always don't forget to to like, comment, and subscribe.